control. Hey, Coach, uh, it was a game that you had control of most of the night, but a team that just kept fighting back. Yeah, well, I'm glad, glad you thought we had control. Well, you know. I, you know. <laughs> no, I know. I mean, the third quarter, that's really, I mean, we got to do a better job coming out in the third quarter offensively. We didn't do a good enough job, you know. I, I talked about it in the locker room. We, we're going to go on defense. We need to get a three and out. We need to go get a touchdown, not three and out and take two possessions and kick the rabbit around the yard, you know. I mean, we're going to play better than that. We didn't do that. And so that extended the game a little bit, and we didn't put our defense too much out there. You know, we were on the field too long in the second half. And so made them get extended. And, but what I really like, though, is we've been talking the last two days about it was going to be a pushback game because we know Coach Witten and they're going to have those guys ready to play. And we're going to throw the ball downfield so it's only one or two plays. They get behind you or something like that happens, and all of a sudden you're, you know, in a one-score game like you were, and you're fighting for your life. And so um, I was really pleased with the way the kids just stood their ground because there was a time there when anybody could have just panicked and said, oh, my goodness, here we go, da 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 and, throwing in and go, oh, they're coming back. We're not moving the ball. We're not making a play. And we didn't do it. We just kept fighting and kept doing what we were supposed to do. Every time they get it to six, you know, Riley gets the, the touchdown. And then the, the last drive was huge. Aquarius' catch on that yeah, third yeah. down. I told Aquarius since he wanted to try to get two catches right. for one, you know, like a tip-in rebound or something like that, I told him that I'm going to run him extra tomorrow morning for that because my heart still is stopped right now at that moment in time because I looked at it and I, I did. I thought he dropped it. And I was like, oh, baby, here we go. But instead, it was, well, baby, here we go, go, you know, and so it was a lot better. And so, uh, JQ, again, stepping up, making a play when we need to, you know, a lot like at CSU Pueblo when he runs for the fourth down and gets inside and catches a tough ball to keep a drive going. And he did it tonight to finish the game and then got some really good run blocking down the stretch to run out that four minute clock. And so, uh, just super pleased with the kids right now. They're a good group of guys, you know, and I was really pleased because I told the guys, the last thing I told them before we came out of the locker room was, you know, I'm really proud of you guys. I really like this team. I really like who they are, their character and the whole deal. I wanted to show them off tonight to the people of Amarillo and Canyon and the University of what they can play like. And so now the burden is on them now because everybody here that was here tonight knows those guys can play and they can play hard and they can play with some passion and desire. Well, now they set a standard that they got to go beat next week. And so um, I'm just really happy for them because they deserve the game like that in front of a great crowd like we had tonight. Question for me. Uh, Evan, Evan flow of the game, first two series, you guys would have got to feel like they weren't even there. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, they just kind of lulled. And then, you know, it took the second half late in the game. Any, any particular reasons for that? I mean, you were, they said well, they were playing um, fast. Oh, well, uh, the whole deal is this, you know, when you're playing quick and you got a good tempo, as the play caller and coaching staff on offense, you can't relinquish the tempo. Even though you're in a mindset, you're thinking, you can't, you can't stop the tempo. You got to keep the tempo going. And when we played fast, even in the third quarter, when it was a one-score ball game or an 11-score ball game, we got to keep going. And I didn't do that. I didn't push it. And then when we started going fast again, we started moving the ball and had some good execution, and we did what we wanted to do. But so that falls just kind of on everybody. If you can keep them in the flow of it. And the toughest thing is not scoreboard watch, you know, because I'm scoreboard watching, going, okay, we're up by this amount, that amount, we need to run some clock with eight minutes. Well, the worst thing you do is then all of a sudden you play tentative and then you're back to not being aggressive. Well, the kids want to be aggressive and they're going to be in the flow of pushing the ball. So um, it kind of falls on everybody. I got to keep them in a rhythm and they got to stay in a rhythm. And some of those drives in the third quarter, Ethan lost his eyes a little bit and started looking at the, the rush or was trying to hold the ball to get the ball too far downfield. And if he, there's a, there's a second, I think a second and eight play, we run shallow and Devon pays wide open on the boundary on the leak route. If he just goes through his normal read and throws it to Devon, Devon's probably running down the sideline into the end zone, uh, but he takes a sack there. You know, that's all stuff that he's just got to keep improving and getting better. Pay makes a catch off his tiptoes for a first down. He, he, he was kind of your Big worst play. worst all night. Third and huge sevens play. on the draws. I mean, my God, I've never seen huge more play. conversions. On huge the play. Yeah. No, no, huge play. The, the fourth quarter catch on our sideline where he picks it up off his shoelaces. Uh, we get him in the right coverage. Ethan makes a good read. And has to throw over the, I think it was number five into the boundary. He gets his hands up and he makes a good throw at trying to get it there. But Devon makes a great catch. And that right there, when you go back and look at it, that's going to be one of those five to six plays that you say define a game because he doesn't convert that. We're punting it. 
and that's not what we want to be doing right there at that point in time because they've gained all the momentum at that. And so, huge catch. And then not to go out of bounds and to run over a guy and get another six yards, you know. And Ethan did a good job. You know, the run checks that the bomb was getting, those are all plays that Ethan was calling and putting us in some plays. He was doing that all night, third and seven. He was getting dropped yeah. with scores. Just what, a, what a night for him. No, overall. really good. No, great night, you know, and I thought the offensive line and those guys. And we talked about that, too. That was one of our key points to the game was, you're going to have to be able to run the football when they give you the run box and you got to convert. 